One question that comes up time and time again is whether it is legal to sleep in your car. So in true lawyer fashion, instead of giving you the answer, I'm going to discuss it and ask you some questions about that instead, and we'll come to the answer together. So welcome back. If you're new to me, I'm a barrister who helps you understand law. And my friend in the comments who always comments on my white t-shirts will be happy because I'm back in my white t-shirt today. So let's get to it. So the first question I would ask you is, why do you want to sleep in your car? Because as lawyers, we always ask you a question when you ask us a question, because we need to know more information to really give you an answer to the question that you're really asking. Because sometimes you'll ask a simple question and actually the information you want is based on something much more complicated. So when you say, is it legal to sleep in your car? We will say, well, that depends. Why do you want to sleep in your car? The most common reason people want to sleep in their car is because they're going out for a drink and therefore they can't drive afterwards because that would be illegal. And then they need somewhere to sleep it off. By the way, as an aside, sleeping for an hour doesn't just clear your system of alcohol. Some people think it does. It doesn't. So some people want to sleep off their drink in their car. Now, that would mean that you are drunk in charge of the vehicle because if there is a reasonable prospect of you driving the vehicle and you are in charge of that vehicle, you are drunk in charge of that vehicle. Many people think that just put the keys in the boot and therefore the police officer won't believe that you're in a position to drive the vehicle. That's not really true. If they find you asleep on the back seat, irrespective of your keys being in the boot or the glove box or wherever, you can be reasonably assured that the police are at least going to think about charging you with being drunk in charge of that vehicle. So in that scenario, of course, I would suggest that it is not legal to sleep in your vehicle because you'd be drunk in charge of that vehicle. And so my only advice to you, or if I were advising you, this isn't advice, if I were making a suggestion to you on this channel, would be not to sleep in your car if you've been out for a drink and find some other method home or sleep somewhere else, find a hotel or whatever. A hotel is gonna cost you significantly less than losing your driving license to a drunk in charge charge and uh, getting banned from driving. So if you have any other way of sleeping it off somewhere else, that's what I would suggest you to do. Assuming that that's not the case and you say to me, no, 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 I'm absolutely not thinking of having a drink and then sleeping it off in my vehicle. That's absolutely not what was on my mind. I'm just thinking about the scenario where I'm tired and I just need to sleep somewhere. Well, there are two rules in the Highway Code that provides for this, Rule 91 and Rule 262. Broadly, both of those say that if you feel sleepy, you should stop somewhere safe and sleep it off but not on the hard shoulder of a motorway and all those kind of things. And no one in their right mind really should be stopping to sleep on the hard shoulder of a motorway. I hope that's common sense, but nonetheless, I've said it anyway. And so these rules do provide that you should go and sleep somewhere. But even then, there is something else that I need to flag up, because if you stop at one of these service stations that's got a, let's say, a maximum stay of three hours beyond which you're going to get a parking charge notice, which is obviously not going to be uh, beneficial to you because they're going to charge you a fee of, you know, whatever it is, 80, 100 pounds or even more sometimes if you've overslept the overstay period. So you sleep longer than three hours, you're on the car park longer than three hours, and that might be easy if you're really tired and you pull into a motorway service station. I would argue that it's better to do that and have to pay the fee than be on the motorway when you're tired. So that's just another way of getting somewhere to sleep if you can't find a hotel or something of that nature. But either way, that would be legal, even though you might end up with a parking charge notice if you overstay. On the other hand, you could pull off the motorway and just find a side road somewhere that isn't a restricted parking zone or permits only and that kind of thing. And then you could just sleep at the side of the road, bearing in mind all the while that it's not necessarily safe to do so because you are somewhat vulnerable whilst you are in a car because car thieves being the opportunist thieves that they are, they might happen upon you and try to steal your car. Because very often thieves will attack the weakest point and that might well be you, the driver, if they can just threaten you to take your vehicle from you while you're asleep at the side of the road. But broadly speaking, that answers the question. It is legal to sleep in your car, provided that it isn't whilst you're in a drunk state and that you're going to be in charge of a vehicle whilst unfit through drink or drugs and thus 
susceptible to a drunk in charge charge and of course the possibility of getting a parking charge notice if you're overstaying somewhere on the motorway services it's probably not going to be a good enough justification to say that you've overstayed because you were asleep. Ultimately, it would be a matter of contract construction. You are entering the car park and contracting to use it for that specific purpose. If there really isn't anywhere else to stay and it would be unsafe to go back on the motorway, you might have a reasonable excuse, but that of course would be down to the courts. As for those of you with motorhomes or motor caravans and things of this nature, and by the way, I'm going to be coming back to do a video on the speed restrictions for classification and whether or not it's got to be registered with the DVLA. I've got my own thoughts on that. I've tried to get in touch with the DVLA, but I can't. They just have no one available on chat and they don't answer the phones. So I've also contacted the National Police Chiefs Council for their views and I'm waiting for their views to come back. So I will be coming back on that one. But as for sleeping in one of these motorhomes, motor caravans, the same rules apply. Broadly speaking, they do broadly apply in the same way. If it is a vehicle that is capable of being driven, and there is a reasonable prospect of it being driven and the police believe that then again even if you're in a motorhome caravan and so on you may be susceptible to a drunken charge charge albeit potentially slightly less if the police are just convinced that you really are just sleeping in there and you're n you have no plan and there's no real prospect of you driving the vehicle but strictly speaking it is a vehicle like any other vehicle and you are still in charge of that vehicle so i can only suggest that your cooperation and your manner with the police is going to persuade the police that there's no real prospect of you driving the vehicle because that's what it comes down to if there is a real prospect of you driving the vehicle and you are drunk in charge then you are drunk in charge with a reasonable prospect of driving and then you might be charged for it so as you can see as i said in my previous video Almost every question is is not a straight yes, no answer. There's always other questions that we need to ask you and it always depends on the circumstances. So as always, this can't be taken as legal advice because your situation might differ very slightly, but I hope that is some way to explaining and giving you some general guidance. Don't stop on the motorway hard shoulders or on the motorway at all to sleep. Pull off the motorway, find somewhere quiet if you need to sleep, and make sure that you aren't doing it after you've had a drink. That's my general guidance. I hope you like these videos, like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.